Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack once more. I don't know whether you can see, but behind me on the screen there's a cover of a Ladybird book. This is called Building a Transistor Radio. This Ladybird books were around in the 70s and the 80s. They were a children's series of how-to books, That one of which, this Building a Transistor Radio one, was very much how I got into electronics and was my first exposure to the world of radio. George Dobbs, who's the author, G3RJV, who sadly passed away last year, was also the founder of the GQRP Club. George made a tremendous contribution to the hobby, so thanks very much for all of that. Now, I wanted to take a trip down memory lane and look at one of George's designs, which I think originates from around the early 90s, the Sudden Receiver. I thought we could have a look at the designs that have been published for that, build one of them, couple it with a newfangled DDS software-based local oscillator stroke VFO, and see what a simple receiver sounds like. We're going to target it at 80 metres, so let's get on with it. This is a copy of Practical Wireless, well it's a PDF from an online archive, um, March 20, uh, 1991, and this I believe is the first publication of the Sudden Receiver by the Reverend George Dobbs. This is the schematic down in the bottom left here, very very simple circuit, uh, uses an NE602 as a direct conversion receiver and then an LM386 as an audio amplifier. So that's the first time this design, as it was originally, was published. There's been a number of modifications, improvements and other updates published to this thing over time. George himself published an update in 2011 and then most recently in issue number 181 of Sprat, which is the journal of the GQRP club, what do you mean you're not a member? Why would you not be a member? Um, there was an updated version called the Super Sudden, and that was published by Charles G1TEX. And then in this version, this copy of the magazine, which is 182, there was an update to the AGC circuit. So there's been some uh, more updates to the Super Sudden in here. So what I've got hold of is Spectrum Communications. Tony Naylor um, has a kit of parts available. Um, so what I thought I'd do is take his kit of parts add the modifications published in Sprat 182 and build a Super Sudden. The kit of parts doesn't include a front-end bandpass filter for the band that we want, nor does it include a local oscillator, so we'll have to do something with that. But first of all, let's get the basic kit built. So the PCB is complete. I didn't want this to be a tutorial in soldering. Um, what I would say though is that the uh, the ability to design um, good quality schematics, generate Gerber files and have extremely high quality PCBs manufactured in the Far East these days is very very easy. This is a etched in someone's shed kind of PCB. There's no silk screen which means it's quite difficult to figure out where the components go. What you've got to do is use this diagram that came with the instructions down here. I managed to get a couple of diodes in the wrong place uh, which I had to then desolder them and put them somewhere else. Um, so perfectly adequate uh, but as modern standards go, it's not really there. Now, what we need now is a bandpass filter to go on the front of this so that we can target it at 80 meters. Now, if you need a bandpass filter, I found if you head to the GQRP Club homepage and then go to the technical pages, and then here somewhere you'll find quick and easy bandpass filters for receiver tuning. These are based on what are called Kank um, coils. I've got quite a lot of these kicking around, they're little um, metal canned components. In fact, my filter looks just like that. So you can look up the band you want. So we want 80 meters, 3.5 to 3.8 megahertz. We need two Kank triple threes. It does tell you what the inductance is, so you could wind your own if you want. Two 39 picofarad capacitors and one 3.3 picofarad capacitor. You solder them together very much in line with the diagram down here and then I'll show you now what mine looks like swept with a spectrum analyzer. 
So I've done a quick sweep of the bandpass filter. I had to tweak the inductors slightly um, to get a flat top to this. But you can see there's about a, that my um, tracking generator is at minus 20 dB. So there's about 6 dB loss, but on 80 meters, who cares? Um, and this has got an excellent response for the, the shape of the band that we're looking for. This marker one is at 3.5, marker two is at 3.8. So what we need now is a VFO. So as I suppose is kind of traditional for my videos now, this is what my VFO is going to be. I'm going to use an STM32 F103C for those playing along at home. This is also known as the blue pill, uh, rotary encoder. I found a new display module, uh, ILI9488, slightly bigger. It's uh, four something by 320. Um, and gives you a bit more screen space, but the pinouts are identical to the, to the um, displays I've used in the past. And this is an AD9850 board. Uh, again, you can buy these on auction sites. Um, these blue pill boards cost about three bob and a conker. The output of my VFO looks like this on my scope, running at 3.546, uh, sorry, at 356 megahertz. Um, so we've got the VFO, we've got the bandpass filter, we've got the board. Let's solder it together and see if it works. So it works. It doesn't seem to matter how many times I do something like that. I still get quite a thrill out of listening to amateur signals on an amateur band using homebrew receivers and transmitters. I, I love it. And that's what I think is fabulous about this hobby of ours. As ever, if you like what I'm doing in this crazy world of mine, please subscribe to the channel. I'd very much appreciate your support. I'll see you next time.